All right, so let's talk about structuring and using databases, okay? So it's essentially, we're gonna talk about how databases work, how uh, users sign up, how we can create new things in our database, how to put things in a list, okay? So overall, uh, you have to just model the database and think about the back end of the application. It may sound complicated, but it's not that. The moment you cross that first little learning curve, you then kind of it'll come naturally to you. Uh, but it essentially what a data model is, it's just a map of entities in your application and the relationship between them, okay? So if I think a messaging app is the most kind of simple model you would think. Uh, I have a, the from person, the to person, and I have the actual message text itself. So there's a relation between the message text and a person, and it's like, okay, this person sent this data from to. So that's just a relationship and just different entities in our application, okay? Now, uh, in Bubble, we call every instance of an entity or object a thing, okay? So a thing, is like one message in, in the example I just described. So data modeling just is just a process of defining, okay, you know what, I have an app, it's a messaging app, I think I'll need users, I'll need messages, I'll need group chat for, I need groups, uh, I need emojis, all that, all these are just, it's just data modeling, so customizing. Uh, things would be a user, a product, a store, restaurant, and relationships would just be how they fit together, all right? So, uh, just think in real life. And it's very easy to just translate that in bubble language and data modeling language as well, okay? So for example, if we're bu building a food delivery app like Uber Eats or Deliveroo, uh, we need things like users, the people who are ordering, restaurants, the places we're ordering from, the menu item, the things we may be ordering, the orders itself. Uh, an order is a list of menu items from a restaurant by a user, okay? So just think in real language terms. It's like, okay, what's an order? An order is fried chicken burger, vegan burger, and uh, chips. And it's like, this is an order from ABC restaurant by XYZ user, okay? So just, again, similar. We have lots of different data types and lots of things are going on in an application, in a food delivery application. So just to cluster them, it's like, okay, Kate's Korean barbecue, that's the description of the restaurant. Peter's pizza, description of the restaurant. Frank's frozen yogurt, description of the restaurant, okay? And these are now custom data types, okay? We, dis we, def we define this structure, okay? In Bubble, we can define, we need a restaurant data type. A restaurant data type will have a name, Kate's Korean barbecue, an address, 123 Brattle Street, an email address. So this would become like, okay, this is our custom data type. So once we model our kind of like what we need to build, then we can define it in bubble, okay, as a custom data type. Now, just to kind of, we, we when we re think in practical terms, we think in a specific example, but you just have a general, generalized thing. Peter's Pizza, I think of Peter's Pizza, okay, a restaurant name. 336 North Boulevard, it's an address. Peter, help at peterspizza.com, it's an email. So just to generalize the, from our data model, we generalized the names and what is the each type of thing we want to save. We have a, a text, another text, an email is a text, an address can be a text, can be a geo address, it just depends, okay? So now each, uh, in Bubble we, have, we can define a type Okay, so each field can be defined as a custom type, right? So we have lots of built-in data types, like text, number, date, uh, image, file, all these are built-in data types and how we can store data itself, okay? So if we are storing a price of an item, we're gonna store it as a number. If we're storing a, a profile picture, we're gonna store it as an image. If we're storing a name of a person, we'll store it as a text. It's just a fundamental unit, okay? So there, as I said, lots of built-in types, text, number, yes, no, date, geographic address, image or file, number interval, so it's a range of numbers, or date interval, a range of dates, okay. Uh, files, now Bubble has native file storage capabilities. Any file you upload uh, that's uploaded from the app can be viewed from the file manager. And 
uh, now the relationship between things is very important. Like an order has a list of menu items from a restaurant. It's just a relationship. Now relationships can be of multiple types. Okay. Uh, we can have a one-to-one -one relationship. Like, okay, one order is by one user to one user's address from one restaurant. Okay. And we can have one to many relationships, which is like one order has many things in the checkout basket, chips, Coke, stuff like that. Many things, one order, many things. A restaurant has multiple orders that it fulfills. So, and there's different, there's also many to many relationships, which is like a third type, which is slightly rarer and slightly more complex. The most common ones are one to one and one to many. Okay. So, uh, just another example in lists, like a restaurant can have many menu items, chicken soup, turkey sandwich, rice and beans, just a different example. Okay. Now uh, we had the built in data types like the text, uh, image, file, number, date. Uh, when we define a new custom data type, it becomes a new type as well. Okay. So this allows us to kind of build complex uh, relationship and build our new clustered things. How do I give an example? Okay. So, uh, a restaurant has menu items, but was it, what is menu items? Uh, menu items themselves can be broken down into like, uh, the, the name of the menu item chips burger or the price, which is a number. So the name is a text. The price is a number. These two together become a menu item and a menu, a multiple menu items in a restaurant. So the menu item became a custom data type. It wasn't a built in bubble data type. So bubble gives us like the fundamental bricks, if you call them, like we have a, a text type or input type, just, it's just at the foundational unit elements. We can cobble them up together in a custom data type, and we can use that custom data type in bigger custom data types and define lots of complex relationships. Okay. Uh, nested data is what we'll call it. Okay. So, uh, as soon as we define new data type, we can use it in another field and this way data can nest. Okay. And we can define types which nest, uh, again, as an example, we had the restaurant, which is email, text, name, text about text, but a menu is a list of items. And what is an item? An item itself is a name the description, okay, chips, uh, lovely fried, twice fried chips, uh, the price itself. Okay. Now, uh, overall you can complicate it even more. So a, a restaurant also has a list of orders and an order. What is an order? An order has a list of items. Okay. Because, uh, the menu has all the items that can be ordered An order has a few. Okay. Uh, you, and, an order has a total cost. Maybe it uh, needs to be picked up from the restaurant. Maybe it's one that the, it has to be delivered. What's the address for delivery? A user can have a favorites, favorite list of restaurants. So you can just kind of, uh, it's important to keep in mind the basic units, cluster them together and kind of build the data model from there. Okay. Uh, built-in fields make it very easier. Uh, it's just a few built-in fields like what's the created date of something that was made? What's the modified date? Who created it? And a unique ID. So each entry in the database already has these built-in fields. They're useful later on if you want to refer to them uh, ahead. So let's look at a bit, bit of a live demo as to where all this stuff is. So uh, we can find the date, we can define our data types in the data tab, in the data types sub tab. Uh, we had our base unit, the individual items, I think. Uh, an item had a name like chips, which was of a type text. Uh, the, these are all the built-in data types. So an item had a description, which is also a type text. An item had a price, okay, which was a number. Now, if we wanted to create a, a restaurant custom data type and we add the name of the restaurant, okay, text, and we add the uh, list of menu items, 
Okay, and we find uh, now because we've defined items before, we have these built in data types, but we also have these custom data types at the end here items. And I just have to check this box. This is a list of menu items. Uh, if I have, I think I had like the email address as well, and I had a address of the restaurant, which can be of a geographic address data type. Uh, next, we also had order. Okay, uh, an order contains a orderer, which will be a user in our app. We'll talk about the user, which is a special type in the next video. Okay, uh, but we also want a list of items that were ordered. Uh, again, it's the items data type and a list. Okay. Now, uh, a helpful way of thinking or planning the database, uh, what I find useful is a Google Sheet, okay? So what we can do is just think of each table as a different sheet, okay? So we have the uh, items, an item has a name, a price, a description. So name, chips, $1, uh, chunky, and we have ice cream, $1, chocolate, chocolate ice cream. So these are our items, okay? Uh, we have a restaurant, which is name, XYZ, pizza place, ABC, coffee shop. So just thinking in a spreadsheet, each table is a separate sheet. We have our header. Now the header is what's being described here. Okay, name, address, and we, now what about individual entries? Okay, where, where are my chips and ice cream? So we, in the, in the custom data type tab, we're just defining the structure. We're not defining actual entries. Okay, now actual entries uh, are here in this app data type. Okay, and what are we gonna need to, we're gonna need to create some UI for our restaurant who can sign up and then add their entries in the menu. Okay, uh, we're gonna slowly, at the moment, let's just think about the basic data model. We can define our data structure. We can define a custom data structure. Uh, we can kind of nest different data together uh, what other things was, yeah, one to many relationship, nest things together, built in fields. So yeah, uh, we're gonna go deeper as we go through the course, uh, but I think that's good for this video. All right, thank you very much and see you in the next video.